Color revolution, sometimes called the colored revolution is a term that was widely used by worldwide media to describe various related movements that developed in several countries of the former Soviet Union and the Balkans during the early 2000s. The term has also been applied to a number of revolutions elsewhere, including in the Middle East. Some observers such as Justin Raimondo and Michael Lind have called the events a revolutionary wave, the origins of which can be traced back to the 1986 People Power Revolution also known as the Yellow Revolution in the Philippines. Participants in the color revolutions have mostly used nonviolent resistance, also called civil resistance. Such methods as demonstrations, strikes and interventions have been intended protest against governments seen as corrupt and or authoritarian and to advocate democracy and they have also created strong pressure for change. These movements generally adopted a specific color or flower as their symbol. The color revolutions are notable for the important role of non-governmental organizations NGOs and particularly student activists in organizing creative nonviolent resistance. Such movements have had a measure of success as for example in the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia's Bulldozer Revolution 2000, in Georgia's Rose Revolution 2003, and in Ukraine's Orange Revolution 2004. In most but not all cases, massive street protests followed disputed elections or requests for fair elections and led to the resignation or overthrow of leaders considered by their opponents to be authoritarian. Some events have been called, "...color revolutions." but are different from the above cases in certain basic characteristics. Examples include Lebanon's Cedar Revolution 2005 and Kuwait's Blue Revolution 2005. Government figures in Russia, such as Defense Minister Sergei Shoigu and Foreign Minister Sergei Lavrov, stated that color revolutions are externally fueled act with a clear goal to influence the internal affairs that destabilize economy, conflict with the law and represent a new form of warfare. President Vladimir Putin said that Russia must prevent color revolutions. We see what tragic consequences the wave of so-called color revolutions led to. For us this is a lesson and a warning. We should do everything necessary so that nothing similar ever happens in Russia. Topic: <laughs> List of color revolutions. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Influencing factors. Anti-communist revolutions Many have cited the influence of the series of revolutions which occurred in Central and Eastern Europe in the late 1980s and early 1990s, particularly the Velvet Revolution in Czechoslovakia in 1989. A peaceful demonstration by students mostly from Charles University was attacked by the police, and in time contributed to the collapse of the communist regime in Czechoslovakia. Yet the roots of the pacifist floral imagery may go even further back to the nonviolent Carnation Revolution of Portugal in April 1974, which is associated with the color Carnation because Carnations were worn, and the 1986 Yellow Revolution in the Philippines where demonstrators offered peace flowers to military personnel manning armored tanks. Topic. Student movements The first of these was Otpor resistance in the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, which was founded at Belgrade University in October 1998 and began protesting against Milosevic during the Kosovo War. Most of them were already veterans of anti-Milosevic demonstrations such as the 1996-97 protests and the 9 March 1991 protest. Many of its members were arrested or beaten by the police. Despite this, during the presidential campaign in September 2000, Otpor launched its Gotovja, he's finished campaign that galvanized Serbian discontent with Milosevic and resulted in his defeat. Members of Otpor have inspired and trained members of related student movements including K. Mara in Georgia, Pora in Ukraine, Zubr in Belarus and MJAFT, in Albania. These groups have been explicit and scrupulous in their practice of nonviolent resistance as advocated and explained in Jean Sharp's writings. The massive protests that they have organized, which were essential to the successes in the Federal Republic of Yugoslavia, Georgia and Ukraine, have been notable for their colorfulness and use of ridiculing humor in opposing authoritarian leaders. Critical analysis Russian assessment 
According to Anthony Cordesman of the Center for Strategic and International Studies, Russian military leaders view the color revolutions as a new U.S. and European approach to warfare that focuses on creating destabilizing revolutions in other states as a means of serving their security interests at low cost and with minimal casualties. <laughs> Chinese view Articles published by the Global Times, a state-run nationalist newspaper, indicate that Chinese leaders also anticipate the Western powers, such as the United States, using color revolutions as a means to undermine the one-party state. An article published on 8 May 2016 claims, "...a variation of containment seeks to press China on human rights and democracy with the hope of creating a color revolution." Topic. Reactions and connected movements in other countries Topic. Armenia Aram Karapetyan, leader of the New Times political party in Armenia, has declared his intention to start a «revolution from below» in April 2005, saying that the situation was different now that people had seen the developments in the CIS. He added that the Armenian Revolution will be peaceful but not have a color. In 2008, a massive anti-government demonstration took place in Armenia. The citizens of Armenia held demonstrations against illegal elections. <inaudible> <inaudible> Azerbaijan A number of movements were created in Azerbaijan in mid-2005, inspired by the examples of both Georgia and Ukraine. A youth group, calling itself Yox, which means no, declared its opposition to governmental corruption. The leader of Yox, said that unlike Pora or Kaymara, he wants to change not just the leadership, but the entire system of governance in Azerbaijan. The Yox movement chose green as its color. The spearhead of Azerbaijan's attempted color revolution was Yeni Fakir, new idea, a youth group closely aligned with the Azadlig freedom bloc of opposition political parties. Along with groups such as Magam, It's Time, and Dalga, Wave, Yeni Fakir deliberately adopted many of the tactics of the Georgian and Ukrainian color revolution groups, even borrowing the color orange from the Ukrainian Revolution. In November 2005, protesters took to the streets, waving orange flags and banners, to protest what they considered government fraud in recent parliamentary elections. The Azerbaijani color revolution finally fizzled out with the police riot on 26 November, during which dozens of protesters were injured and perhaps hundreds tear-gassed and sprayed with water cannons. <inaudible> <inaudible> Bangladesh On February 5, 2013, protests began in Shabag and later spread to other parts of Bangladesh following demands for capital punishment for Abdul Quader Mala, who had been sentenced to life imprisonment, and for others convicted of war crimes by the International Crimes Tribunal of Bangladesh. On that day, the International Crimes Tribunal had sentenced Mala to life in prison after he was convicted on five of six counts of war crimes. Later demands included banning the Bangladesh Jamaat-e-Islami party from politics including election and a boycott of institutions supporting or affiliated with the party. Protesters considered Mala's sentence too lenient, given his crimes. Bloggers and online activists called for additional protests at Shabag. Tens of thousands of people joined the demonstration, which gave rise to protests across the country. The movement demanding trial of war criminals is a protest movement in Bangladesh, from 1972 to present. Topic: <inaudible> <inaudible> Belarus. In Belarus, there have been a number of protests against President Alexander Lukashenko, with participation from student group ZUBR. One round of protests culminated on 25 March 2005, it was a self-declared attempt to emulate the Kyrgyzstan Revolution, and involved over a thousand citizens. However, police severely suppressed it, arresting over 30 people and imprisoning opposition leader Mikhail Marinich. A second, much larger, round of protests began almost a year later, on 19 March 2006, soon after the presidential election. Official results had Lukashenko winning with 83% of the vote. Protesters claimed the results were achieved through fraud and voter intimidation, a charge echoed by many foreign governments. 
Protesters camped out in October Square in Minsk over the next week, calling variously for the resignation of Lukashenko, the installation of rival candidate Aleksandar Milinkovic, and new, fair elections. The opposition originally used as a symbol the white-red-white -white former flag of Belarus, the movement has had significant connections with that in neighboring Ukraine, and during the Orange Revolution some white-red-white -white flags were seen being waved in Kiev. During the 2006 protests some called it the "...jeans revolution", or "...denim revolution", blue jeans being considered a symbol for freedom. Some protesters cut up jeans into ribbons and hung them in public places. It is claimed that Zubr was responsible for coining the phrase. Lukashenko has said in the past, In our country, there will be no pink or orange, or even banana revolution. More recently he said, They the West think that Belarus is ready for some orange or, what is a rather frightening option, blue or cornflower blue revolution. Such blue revolutions are the last thing we need. On 19 April 2005, he further commented, all these colored revolutions are pure and simple banditry. <inaudible> Burma In Burma officially called Myanmar, a series of anti-government protests were referred to in the press as the Saffron Revolution after Buddhist monks Theravada Buddhist monks normally wear the color saffron took the vanguard of the protests. A previous, student-led revolution, the 8888 uprising on 8 August 1988, had similarities to the color revolutions, but was violently repressed. China A call which first appeared on 17 February 2011 on the Chinese-language site Boxin.com in the United States for a "'Jasmine Revolution' in the People's Republic of China and repeated on social networking sites in China resulted in blocking of internet searches for Jasmine and a heavy police presence at designated sites for protest such as the McDonald's in central Beijing, one of the 13 designated protest sites, on 20 February 2011. A crowd did gather there, but their motivations were ambiguous as a crowd tends to draw a crowd in that area. Boxen experienced a denial of service attack during this period and was inaccessible. In 2009, Uyghurs resisted the Chinese government. Topic: <inaudible> Fiji. In the 2000s, Fiji suffered numerous coups, but at the same time, many Fiji citizens resisted the military. In Fiji, there have been many human rights abuses by the military. Anti-government protesters in Fiji have fled to Australia and New Zealand. In 2011, Fijians conducted anti-Fijian government protests in Australia. On 17 September 2014, the first democratic general election was held in Fiji. <inaudible> Moldova The opposition is reported to have hoped for and urged some kind of orange revolution, similar to that in Ukraine, in the follow-up of the Moldovan parliamentary elections, 2005, while the Christian Democratic People's Party adopted orange for its color in a clear reference to the events of Ukraine, a name hypothesized for such an event was, Grape Revolution, because of the abundance of vineyards in the country, however, such a revolution failed to materialize after the governmental victory in the elections. Many reasons have been given for this, including a fractured opposition and the fact that the government had already co-opted many of the political positions that might have united the opposition such as a perceived pro-European and anti-Russian stance. Also the elections themselves were declared fairer in the OSCE election monitoring reports than had been the case in other countries where similar revolutions occurred, even though the CIS monitoring mission strongly condemned them, there was civil unrest all over Moldova following the 2009 parliamentary election due to the opposition claiming that the communists had fixed the election. Eventually, the Alliance for European Integration created a governing coalition that pushed the communist party into opposition. Mongolia On 25 March 2005, activists wearing yellow scarves held protests in the capital city of Ulaanbaatar, disputing the results of the 2004 Mongolian parliamentary elections and calling for fresh elections. One of the chants heard in that protest was, Let's congratulate our Kyrgyz brothers for their revolutionary spirit. Let's free Mongolia of corruption. 
An uprising commenced in Ulaanbaatar on 1 July 2008, with a peaceful meeting in protest of the election of 29 June. The results of these elections were it was claimed by opposition political parties corrupted by the Mongolian People's Party MPRP. Approximately 30,000 people took part in the meeting. Afterwards, some of the protesters left the central square and moved to the HQ of the Mongolian People's Revolutionary Party, which they attacked and then burned down. A police station was also attacked. By the night rioters vandalized and then set fire to the Cultural Palace which contained a theater, museum and national art gallery. Cars torching, bank robberies and looting were reported. The organizations in the burning buildings were vandalized and looted. Police used tear gas, rubber bullets and water cannon against stone-throwing protesters. A four-day state of emergency was installed, the capital has been placed under a 2200-0800 curfew, and alcohol sales banned, rioting not resumed. Five people were shot dead by the police, dozens of teenagers were wounded from the police firearms and disabled and 800 people, including the leaders of the civil movements J. Batsandan, O. Magni and B. Jargalsakan, were arrested. International observers said the 1st of July general election was free and fair. Topic: Pakistan. In 2007, the lawyers' movement started in Pakistan with the aim of restoration of deposed judges. However, within a month, the movement took a turn and started working towards the goal of removing Pervez Musharraf from power. Topic: Russia. The liberal opposition in Russia is represented by several parties and movements. An active part of the opposition is the Oberona Youth Movement. Oberona claims that its aim is to provide free and honest elections and to establish in Russia a system with democratic political competition. This movement under leadership of Oleg Kozlovsky is one of the most active and radical ones and is represented in a number of Russian cities. The movement contributed with its activities recently during the elections of 8 September 2013 to the success of Navalny in Moscow and other opposition candidates in various regions and towns of Russia. The Oberonkis also took part with other oppositional groups in protests against fraud in the Moscow mayoral elections. Since 2012 protests, it was Alexei Navalny, who mobilized with support of the various and fractured oppositional parties and groups masses of young people against alleged repression and fraud of the Kremlin apparatus. After a strong campaign for the 8 September elections in Moscow and many regions, the opposition had won remarkable successes. So Navalny reached in Moscow a second place with surprising 27% behind Kremlin-backed Sergei Sobyanin with 51%. In other regions opposition's candidates received remarkable successes. So in the big industrial town Yekaterinburg in 2013 opposition candidate Yevgeny Roisman received the majority of votes and became the mayor of that town. The slow but gradual sequence of opposition successes reached by mass protests, election campaigns and other peaceful strategies has been recently called by observers and analysts as of Radio Free Europe, tortoise revolution, in contrast to the radical, rose, or orange. Ones the Kremlin tried to prevent, the opposition in the Republic of Bashkortostan has held protests demanding that the federal authorities intervene to dismiss Mortaza Rakhimov from his position as President of the Republic, accusing him of leading an arbitrary, corrupt, and violent regime. Irat Dilmakamatov, one of the opposition leaders, and leader of the Bashkir National Front, has said that the opposition movement has been inspired from the mass protests of Ukraine and Kyrgyzstan. Another opposition leader, Merit Kayyarulan, has said that if an orange revolution were to happen in Russia, it would begin in Bashkortostan. Uzbekistan In Uzbekistan, there has been long-standing opposition to President Islam Karimov, from liberals and Islamists. Following protests in 2005, security forces in Uzbekistan carried out the Andijan massacre that successfully halted countrywide demonstrations. These protests otherwise could have turned into color revolution. According to many analysts, the revolution in neighboring Kyrgyzstan began in the largely ethnic Uzbek south and received early support in the city of Ash. Nagora Hidayatova, leader of the Free Peasants Opposition Party, has referred to the idea of a peasant revolt or cotton revolution. 
She also said that her party is collaborating with the youth organization Shidit, and that she hopes it can evolve to an organization similar to K Mara or Pora. Other nascent youth organizations in and for Uzbekistan include Bolga and the Free Uzbek Group. Uzbekistan has also had an active Islamist movement, led by the Islamic Movement of Uzbekistan, most notable for the 1999 Tashkent bombings, though the group was largely destroyed following the 2001 NATO invasion of Afghanistan. Response in other countries When groups of young people protested the closure of Venezuela's RCTV television station in June 2007, President Hugo Chavez said that he believed the protests were organized by the West in an attempt to promote a soft coup, like the revolutions in Ukraine and Georgia. Similarly, Chinese authorities claimed repeatedly in the state-run media that the 2014 Hong Kong protests, known as the Umbrella Revolution, was organized and controlled by the United States. In July 2007, Iranian state television released footage of two Iranian-American prisoners, both of whom work for Western NGOs, as part of a documentary called In the Name of Democracy. The documentary purportedly discusses the color revolutions in Ukraine and Georgia and accuses the United States of attempting to foment a similar ouster in Iran. Other examples of color revolutions and political movements around the world The imagery of a color revolution has been adopted by various non-revolutionary electoral campaigns. The Purple Revolution social media campaign of Nahid Nenshi catapulted his platform from 8% to become Calgary's 36th mayor. The platform advocated city sustainability and to inspire the high voter turnout of 56%, particularly among young voters. In 2015, the NDP of Alberta earned a majority mandate and ended the 44 year old dynasty of the Progressive Conservatives. During the campaign Rachel Notley's popularity gained momentum, and the news and NDP supporters referred to this phenomenon as the orange crush per the party's color. NDP parodies of orange-flavored crush soda logo became a popular meme on social media. See also Civil resistance Nonviolent revolution Nonviolent resistance Revolutions of 1989 2008 Greek riots Arab Spring Spring revolutions disambiguation Euromaidan and 2014 Ukrainian revolution Topic References Topic Further reading Bisinger, Mark R. 2007. Structure and Example in Modular Political Phenomena, The Diffusion of Bulldozer, Rose, Orange, Tulip Revolutions. Perspectives on Politics. 5 2, 259-276. doi, 10.1017, s1537592707070770. Don Brancati, Democracy Protests, Causes, Significance, and Consequences. Cambridge University Press, 2016. Donasha O. Bichain and Able Police, eds. The Color Revolutions in the Former Soviet Republics, Successes and Failures. Routledge, 2010. ISBN 978-0-41-562547-0. Valerie J. Bunce and Sharon L. Wilchick, Defeating Authoritarian Leaders in Post-Communist Countries. Cambridge University Press, 2011 Stephen Levitsky and Lucan A. Way, Competitive Authoritarianism, Hybrid Regimes After the Cold War. Cambridge University Press, 2010 Pavel Deems and Jörg Forbrig eds. Reclaiming Democracy, Civil Society and Electoral Change in Central and Eastern Europe. German Marshall Fund, 2007. Jörg Fabrig, ed. Revisiting Youth Political Participation, Challenges for Research and Democratic Practice in Europe. Council of Europe, Publishing Division, Strasbourg 2005, ISBN 92-871-5654-9 Landry, Tristan, 2011. The Color Revolutions in the Rearview Mirror, Closer Than They Appear. Canadian Slavonic Papers. 53 1, 1-24.
ISSN 0008-5006. Adam Roberts and Timothy Garton Ash eds, Civil Resistance and Power Politics, The Experience of Nonviolent Action from Gandhi to the Present, Oxford, Oxford University Press, 2009. ISBN 978-0-19-955201-6. U.S. edition. On Google Kurt Schock, Unarmed Insurrections, People Power Movements in Nondemocracies. University of Minnesota Press, 2005. Joshua A. Tucker, Enough. Electoral Fraud, Collective Action Problems, and Post-Communist Colored Revolutions, 2007. Perspectives on Politics, 5 537-553. Akbar E. Torbat, The Arab Uprisings and Iran's Green Movement, 19 October 2011. Topic external links Albert Einstein Institution, East Boston, Massachusetts Central Asian Backlash Against U.S. Franchised Revolutions Written by K. Gajendra Singh, India's former ambassador to Turkey and Azerbaijan from 1992 to 1996. The Center for Democracy in Lebanon Hardy Merriman, The Trifecta of Civil Resistance, Unity, Planning, Discipline, 19 November 2010 at OpenDemocracy.net Howard Clark Civil Resistance Website How Orange Networks Work ICNC's Online Learning Platform for the Study and Teaching of Civil Resistance, Washington, D.C. International Center on Nonviolent Conflict ICNC, Washington, D.C. Jack Duvall, Civil Resistance and the Language of Power, 19 November 2010 at OpenDemocracy.net Michael Barker, Regulating Revolutions in Eastern Europe, Polyarchy and the National Endowment for Democracy, 1 November 2006. Oxford University Research Project on Civil Resistance and Power Politics Sowing Seeds of Democracy in Post-Soviet Granite The Future of Democracy in Post-Soviet States Written by Lauren Brodsky, a Ph.D. candidate at the Fletcher School in Medford, Mass., focusing on U.S. public diplomacy and the regions of Southwest and Central Asia. Stellan Vindigan, People Power and the New Global Ferment, 15 November 2010 at OpenDemocracy.net United for Belarus Campaign British Campaign website drawing attention to the political situation in Belarus ahead of 2006 presidential elections.